Hello, everyone. And thank you for coming, and very welcome to my session. Uh, my name is Nobaki Ogawa. I work at Electronix for Imaging uh, for the software called DirectSmile as DevOps QA manager. And obviously, I'm Asian, and uh, probably uh, maybe you can notice I'm Japanese. However, that my office is located in Berlin, Germany, and I lived there at the uh, last five years, so that's why it's quite near uh, to join a uh, uh, European user conference rather than go to Japan. I mean, like it's 10,000 kilometers away, so that's why I joined here. Yeah, okay, and I'm really happy and this exciting to talk about continuous delivery with Jenkins, especially how easily you can achieve continuous delivery, especially if you use Jenkins. So, continuous delivery. Continuous delivery is getting the, uh, the very hot trend world nowadays, and uh, beside of this user conference, there is a continuous delivery summit running, and uh, today's keynote session, he talked about uh, quite a lot about uh, continuous delivery and DevOps, so great. And so, as same as others, I also would like to introduce my definition of continuous delivery. I think continuous delivery is process automation. Then what kind of process do we have in our business life? Take a look at this picture. This is very typical software lifecycle or application lifecycle. So you have develop something, build something, deploy something, and test it, and make DevOps, which I personally think it's a Kaizen task. That means like uh, improve and uh, to avoid temodori. It's another Japanese word, probably not written on the Phoenix project, but it means rework, so to avoid rework. And then you release software, and finally, customer use that. Of course, important thing is feedback. So we have to hear what they are saying, like there is a bug or there is an idea of new feature, and collect such feedback and pass it over to the planning. And they will decide what should be done for the next version. And such a task will be passed over to the developer, and they really work on it fix the bug, add new powerful features, and they build new batch. And then we deploy it, test it, and so on. So as you might notice, even there is a lot of the process. However, this is infinitive loop. Because once you start it, it will never end, right? <laughs> so it's, it has to be uh, going through continuously. So to achieve continuous delivery, uh, you need to automate process. And uh, there are two things you need to automate, I think. The first one is task execution of each single process, like build automation, deploy automation, test automation, or release automation. But that's not enough. Because the uh, important thing here is actually process automation. So take this entire infinity loop as one big process and try to automate that. So what means something like this? So you also need to automate the connection from one process to the next process. Then you can achieve continuous delivery. And of course, once you achieve continuous delivery, you can get a lot of benefit. So something like this, see? However, however, all those benefits written on here is more for business owner or manager. So maybe you don't have any interest. So as I'm from the DevOps and the QA, I would like to uh, talk about real benefit I personally got by achieving continuous delivery. So first, stress-free release. Because of the test automation, every version we release into the market, we test it. And it passed test, that's why it's released, right? So we are sure it works. So I don't need to feel any stress to release a new version. Great. 
Second thing is trustability to my categories. Because of the deployment automation, formerly we deploy our software by hand, manually, on any customer server. As you might notice, there's a lot of the environment specific value like a database name, like host URL or location of the directory, and so on and so on. So manual deployment is super error prone operation. Uh, but we automate that. Then, nowadays, my colleague only need to open Jenkins, click this button. Then he can deploy a new version, and that's it. So it's button click. So I can trust him 100% because, hey, there's no my colleague right here who cannot click a button and who don't know browser. So it's quite good. And which leads actually like a sad uh, benefit. That is, now I can sleep much longer and better. <laughs> yeah, it's quite the same reason. Uh, formerly, I mean, like, uh, for example, there was a customer who got their update at uh, the afternoon, right, this time. And uh, for fast five, six hours, it works fine. So good. And actually, it was taken care of my colleagues. And uh, then, 3 a.m. in the morning, he called me. And uh, he's yelling, hey, there's something wrong, doesn't work, doesn't work. You have to wake up and fix the problem. Come on. And of course, I have to open laptop and somehow connect to their server and investigate the, uh, the problem and fix the issue. If necessary, I need to debug one version before, which was deployed. But this won't happen anymore. I mean, in worst case, if it happened, only what I need to do is, for example, if I could have like AppWatch and I got such email, okay. Then debug to the one version before and I can back to sleep. So my sleep time is getting longer and the quality getting better. Thank you, Jenkins. <laughs> okay, so now it's a time really like uh, how we are using Jenkins to achieve continuous delivery. First one is development. Again, I'm sure I'm minority in here. Uh, I'm Windows guy. And our developer using Visual Studio for the backtracking, Mantis. Subversion for version control, not Git yet. I personally like it. Yeah. And uh, to build our software, we are using Jenkins. The second thing is deployment. Deployment has to be automated. So to make it, what we are doing is actually we developed one tiny tool. We call it Direct Smart Installation Service. And basically, this is just agent that you can install on any target server. And by communicating with the client, you can remotely deploy our software or configure it or customize it. Or even you can maintain that. For example, reset IIS or restart Windows service. And uh, because this is just a command line tool, it's super easy to integrate into Jenkins. So we did this. Uh, but I'm not saying like you need to develop something like this because yesterday I talked a lot of the sponsors and uh, there's a lot of the tool already available in the market for the Windows world. For example, Octopus Deploy. And uh, yesterday, the guy from the IBM introduced me Urban Code Deploy. And another sponsor, Selena, he also said like it's possible with their solution. If you don't like to pay, maybe you can use Jenkins slave mechanism to do that. It's possible. Uh, important thing is there is an advantage to make automation. The first, it's automatic operation. It's automatic. Second, it's minimum operation time because there is no human. It's Jenkins deployed it. It's a computer. It's very fast. Uh, means less human error and less misconfiguration. It's because everything has to be pretty configured and uh, you have to make a job on the Jenkins. That exactly means everyone can execute that because it's anyway one button click. 
The next one is a test. Uh, fortunately, our application is a web application, so it's a, it's an IIS application, to be honest. So we are using Selenium. And uh, since I'm not developer, I'm really from ops, and uh, especially I have some background as a sales guy uh, and the marketing guy, so I love GUI. So Selenium ID. And uh, to run it, uh, we are using Selenium Remote Control. And of course, executed by Jenkins. Okay, next thing, infrastructure as code. This is quite a problematic topic. So developer make new version, and we need to deploy it for test. So we need server. But for the server, I have several requirements. Basically, I need just tiny, small server. But sometimes I need one big, powerful server. But sometimes I need like a much pool server to make one big system. And I need to have full control, because if I ask IT guys, like uh, he quite easy to ignore me, won't reply my email, and uh, so I would like to control everything. So only the option is virtual machine. Again, I'm Windows guy. So we are using Microsoft Azure. How to control it? We are using PowerShell script. What you can do PowerShell script for the Azure? It's basically, you can create virtual machine on the fly. If you have any prerequisite to be installed, then you can simply apply DSC script, desired state configuration. So, and of course you can start it and stop it. And to take a backup, it's a kind of like snapshot, and restore the, uh, the machine from the snapshot. And this would be like a very fast point that I want to start my test. Because restore the, uh, the, the machine which already have some version, and then based on this environment, I would like to deploy new version because this is exactly the same what the customer will get for the new version. And of course, you can shut down, or if nece not necessary, then you can just remove it. Because I don't like to be charged. Only when I need this machine is when we need test. And this is just right after the installer was there. And once it was, uh, in, uh, the test was finished, I would like to simply destroy virtual machine. And of course, you can control load balancing as well. And the uh, important thing is, Everything with Jenkins. Just one button click. All right. Okay, uh, so, oops, sorry. Uh, the continuous integration. Continuous integration is uh, the principle, not the tool. However, there is a tool, it definitely helps you to make it. That is Jenkins. So let me wrap up my session. In my case, uh, Jenkins does build our software, deploy our software, test our software, and uh, even maintain that, and uh, even monitor. Okay, uh, I have still some time, so let me just take one thing. Uh, maybe you remember one of the things like uh, Mr. Kosuke Kawaguchi uh, introduced at his presentation at the day one, so yesterday. Uh, it's actually one of the, our customers who are producing this one. Uh, these are the button, easy button. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, do you know someone who thinks like it's super complicated to click this button? Come on, then what happened actually if you click this button? That was easy. <laughs> So, to achieve continuous delivery, if you use Jenkins, Jenkins made it easy, right. Thank you for raising, and uh, the last, but uh, uh, I think like a continuous sharing is important. That's why I'm standing at here, to share my thought and experience and everything, because it might help you slightly. And uh, I also would like to get some slightly share from you, so please give me some feedback, even this app, 
or like uh, uh, on the Twitter. Maybe you can just take a picture of me and tweet it. Jenkins made. That was easy. Right? <laughs> so such kind of feedback is very welcome, and I like, really love to see that. And uh, thank you for listening again. Uh, maybe I can have some question time. OK, one or two. Is there anyone have the question? Or is it too easy? I'm oh, sorry? Yes? I'm sorry? Ah, uh, my Twitter handle is uh, Nobla Kitter. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And uh, of course, I mean, because of the, I'm Japanese, so maybe you will have, like, a, if you search with the Jenkins conf with hashtag, then definitely you will find the, the pictures that I took it with Mr. Jenkins. There. Yeah. And of course, like you can just uh, uh, give me a direct message or email is also very welcome. And uh, in the case, if you have like a, hey, what this guy is actually uh, working for? It's called direct smile. Maybe you can also go with it. Sorry. <laughs> Anyone else? No? Thank you for raising.